Greetings. Uh, let us talk about stricture dilation using a balloon catheter. These are my acknowledgments. And today we will learn about the use of a balloon dilation catheter and how to set it up. Before we go into that uh, setup, uh, let us uh, look at esophageal strictures, simple strictures like Schatzky's ring can be dilated with a balloon catheter. Esophageal webs, again another simple stricture, can also be dilated with a balloon catheter. Complex strictures like peptic strictures, cancerous strictures, radiation strictures, these are all complex strictures. These also can be dilated with a balloon catheter. Balloon catheters can come with or without a guide wire. And when it comes to a complex stricture, it is better to use a guide wire assisted balloon catheter. So now look at what do you need to do to set up a balloon dilator. Obviously, you have to ask the endoscopist uh, what size will he be requiring for the dilation and start with that a balloon and then bring at least a three sizes higher than that. And balloon catheters are available from 6 to 20 millimeters in size and some balloon catheters can go up in a single dilation from six to nine millimeters. Uh, that is called as controlled radial expansion, and depending upon the amount of pressure that is used for achieving a particular size of dilation. So there are two types of balloon dilation catheters. One, it gives you a fixed uh, size, uh, and another, where as you increase the pressure, the balloon increases in size. That is controlled radial expansion balloon. So when it comes to setting up a dilator for the procedure, you need a gun and that would allow to pump the air and a syringe with a manometric uh, device attached to it that will be filled with the fluid and then you attach the balloon dilation catheter with or without the use of a guide wire. You also need lubricant uh, to allow the dilation catheter to go down the biopsy port of the endoscope and a little bit of gauze to put the lubricant on. So now let us learn about balloon dilator gun and uh, important to learn the basics. As you can see here, uh, the handle has a device, a lock. This is uh, currently in inflation position. That means uh, in that uh, direction, if you pump that handle, uh, it will inflate the balloon and if you move it back it is a neutral position and in that one you can pump and move uh, the syringe forward or backward uh, doesn't really matter and then you have a deflation position uh, that is when you pump the handle uh, it will deflate the balloon so Deflation position to remove uh, uh, remove fluid and air from the balloon. Inflation position to inflate the balloon. And neutral position where you can adjust uh, the device to fit the uh, syringe. So once you learn these basics, inflation, deflation, neutral position, it is very easy. Uh, now let us figure out how to set up the syringe and how do you hook it up to the uh, dilator gun. So you 
keep the handle in a neutral position and then slip the uh, string into the handle slot and then uh, put the clip on and uh, secure the syringe. So now you have the gun with the syringe set up. And what do you do next? So you can see uh, the gun is in neutral position. The next step is you want to put it in a inflation position and you pump the handle uh, so as to empty all the air in the syringe. Then the next step is you need to fill a tub with water, uh, sterile water, and then you want to fill the syringe with water. Uh, how do you go, the, how do you about doing that? In order to fill the syringe, you need to think about uh, moving the, uh, uh, switching the position from inflation to deflation position. So you need to switch it to deflation position. And then when you pump, it will suck the fluid and uh, that will fill the syringe. So how far do you need to fill the syringe? Uh, there is a marker there, as you can see, uh, at 35 millimeters on the syringe. You want to fill the syringe with the fluid until it is filled up to 35 cc's of water. So now you have uh, the fluid filled syringe up to 35 cc's and you want to make sure if you suction some air how do you get rid of that air you should not have any air in the syringe you, the next step is to expel the air in the syringe so in order to do that you angle the gun up and uh, switch the uh, position to inflation position and pump the handle to expel the air. So now you have a syringe filled with fluid with no air. So now you're ready to attach the balloon uh, to the syringe and uh, you just screw it and attach the balloon catheter to the syringe. The next step is you want to get rid of any air that is there in that uh, balloon catheter, uh, uh, the channel that goes to the balloon. So you want to deflate uh, any, uh, take off any air from there. And in order to do that, you want to switch the uh, device to deflation position and angle the gun down uh, so as the air will come up and pump on the handle until it stops removing air from the catheter. So now you have the balloon dilation system set up ready and when the uh, endoscopist, by this time the endoscopist puts this catheter down the biopsy channel uh, into the esophagus and adjusts it uh, in the stricture and then he will say start inflation. So with this you need to Again, move it to inflation position and pump uh, on the handle slowly uh, to the appropriate pressure. So that will dilate the balloon. So there are a lot of steps. I think the most important thing, if you think about it, you need to know the inflation position, neutral position, deflation position of the gun and uh, make sure that the syringe has no air and uh, syringe is uh, empty of any air and just filled with 35 ml of fluid and uh, when it comes to inflation of the balloon you put it to inflation position and once the dilation is done if you want to deflate the balloon you put it into deflation position and pump it's very simple so let us see what happens when uh, you're dilating a stricture so here is a balloon catheter that is going down into the stricture and uh, sometimes endoscopists look under a fluoroscopy and if you're doing a fluoroscopy then some people may use a dilute contrast 
that is uh, uh, something to discuss with the endoscopist to figure out that. And then the balloon is gently dilated to whatever size. And once you dilate to a particular size, say for example, you, you take a six millimeter balloon and dilate to seven millimeters. And when the pressure reading comes, uh, on the catheter, for every pressure reading, it will tell you how much is the balloon dilated to. And once you reach that uh, pressure, you tell the endoscopist, we reach the pressure, and now the balloon is at that particular size, either seven millimeters or whatever. And then uh, ask the endoscopist, how long does he want to keep the dilation on and then check the clock and say one minute over or two minutes over, whatever the endoscopist prefers. And then you should ask him, are we dilating further or are we deflating? If we need to deflate, you move the position of the gun uh, handle to deflation and then you deflate. So here we're dilating and once the dilation is over, the endoscopist says, okay, let's deflate and uh, you change it to deflation position, pump the handle, that will deflate the balloon, and then you take the catheter out. It is important to deflate the balloon completely uh, until nothing comes out into the syringe before the, you ask the endoscopist, now you can take the balloon catheter out, uh, because if it is not completely deflated, and there is still some fluid, the endoscopist will struggle to pull it through that biopsy channel. So we have learned about the balloon dilation catheters. They're available with or without the wire. They start from sizes six to 20 millimeters and how to use the gun and make sure that there is no air in the syringe. Uh, when you're trying to dilate, you also make sure you suction all the air in the catheter, the balloon catheter, uh, uh, before you start uh, inflating. I hope this is useful. Thank you.